Good evening, everyone, and welcome to these office hours for the STEM Alliance Minecraft Education Edition competition uh, 2022. This webinar is co-organized by the STEM Alliance, Scientix, as well as Microsoft, and it is part of the 2022 uh, STEM Discovery campaign. My name is Bjorn Bachmann, and I'm coordinating European SchoolNet's activities in this competition. Together with us today in the room, we have my colleagues Isidora and Rocio, who will be supporting this webinar from a technical point of view. So if you have any issues with your audio or connection, please do not hesitate to send them a message in the chat. And most importantly, I have the pleasure to welcome our expert speaker for today. That's Nina Gibert, who is a global Minecraft mentor. So thanks a lot, Nina, for being here with us today and presenting and answering later to our audience's questions. So just some basic rules for the interaction in this webinar. Uh, here we have some technical aspects. You will see that the microphones have been muted. Uh, so if you have a question to our speaker, you can just post them in the chat and we will address them later in the Q&A session. And uh, in that session, you will also have the option to raise your hand and then we can unmute your microphone. So if you want to uh, post your message in the chat, that's fine. But later you can also turn on your camera and your microphone and talk directly with us. Also, to get a greater experience out of this webinar, I've mentioned the chat already. So uh, have a look here because we will be sharing useful information and links with you throughout this event. And of course, that's also where you can post your comments and questions. And as a matter of fact, this is already the first link we're going to share in the chat. Uh, it's the signature list. So you can now click on this link and we would like to ask you to confirm that uh, you've participated here because that way we can prove this event took place and we can continue organizing events like this one in the future. Also, if you're interested in a certificate of participation, you will have to enter your credentials here and then you will receive one. Good, let's go on to the agenda for today. We'll begin with an introduction to the STEM Alliance Minecraft competition. We will then move on to the demonstration, a live demonstration by our expert, Nina Gibert. And uh, she will show you, sharing her screen, how to download and access Minecraft Education Edition, how to build Minecraft worlds with your students and all of these things. So really, it's a very interesting live demonstration that you'll have here. As you know already, you'll be able to ask questions to the speaker throughout the webinar and we'll address them later in the Q&A session. So don't be shy, just post your questions and thoughts and share these with us in the chat. Now, before we continue with a Minecraft demonstration, let me just quickly introduce this year's competition. And you may be familiar with it already. It's the STEM Alliance Minecraft Education Edition competition organized by the STEM Alliance and Microsoft. And as a matter of fact, I'm really happy to share with you that the deadline for submissions has been extended to the 22nd of May. So if you still need time to uh, prepare your worlds and introduce this in your class, you do have the time now and you can still participate in this competition. And uh, of course, you can win great, great Minecraft goodies or even a promotional video for your school. So uh, you just need to submit your entry in the submission form and I will show you in a second what you need to do exactly to prepare. But let me just explain more generally what this competition is about. So the competition is designed to engage students in creative thinking, problem solving and a better understanding of democracy, citizenship and peace under the theme active citizen building for peace. And all of this is in partnership with the Nobel Peace Center. And uh, this competition is about learning about some of the Nobel Peace Prize winners and their amazing achievements. So you can challenge your learners to work in teams of one to five students using Minecraft Education Edition to design and build solutions using a world template and teaching resources from Minecraft. 
And as I mentioned, our expert Nina will later show you more about these aspects. But let me first actually share this slide with you because we would be interested in hearing how familiar you are with Minecraft. So have a look at the chat. We are sharing the link to this mentee here. But also you can scan the QR code or go to menti.com and enter the numbers that you see on the slides. So I'll give you a moment to enter the room. And in the meantime, I will share my screen so we can see the results. And indeed, we have a very diverse picture here. So the majority have, of you have heard about it, but never used it yourself. And that's great because I hope tonight you will hear more about it and you will be able to use it. And then we have some of you who are actually build, building your own worlds in the free time. And some of you are even comfortable teaching Minecraft to students. So that's great. Uh, welcome to all of you. I hope this webinar will be useful to each of you and of course to any kind of uh, level of familiarity. Uh, please feel free to share your questions and uh, this way uh, you can get the most out of this webinar. Knowing now what your level of familiarity is, let me just yeah, and briefly describe the competition that we're organizing. So this competition calls for educators in primary and secondary education in Europe to integrate Minecraft education edition in your teaching. And you need to submit a 90 second video of the worlds that the learners have created. Basically, there are two categories. So there is one category for learners that are 13 years old and younger. And there is one for learners that are 14 years old and older. So depending on which level you teach in, you can participate in these categories. As I've also just mentioned, the competition will run until Sunday, the 22nd of May. And participating is fairly easy. You just need to visit the competition website and follow the steps that I'm going to walk you through in a second. But first of all, do have a look at the terms and conditions because they will provide you with all the guidelines you need and really that's the place where you find all the information that's relevant so i really encourage you to have a look at these but here is a step-by-step -step process first register to the competition because to participate you need to register and this way we can send you updates such as the extension of the deadline for instance and we can send you further guidance and information. To register, just go to the website and you will find the link there. And then you can move on to step two, which is to download the Active Citizen Minecraft world. And here you need to download this world to complete the build challenge. Again, you will find the link on our website and Nina will also show you how to do this in a moment. Then you need to prepare the challenge. So if you're new to Minecraft, there are many resources available to help you get started. And of course, you absolutely did the right choice in joining these office hours today, because here you can ask your questions to the expert. And uh, of course, you can also check out introduction videos or teacher trainings that we provide again on our website. Also, when preparing for the integration of Minecraft to your class, make sure that you're familiar with the learning objectives of this build challenge, because if you comply with these learning objectives, you will have better chances of actually winning the promotional video or the Minecraft goodies for your classroom. So these learning objectives are to foster appreciation of democracy, to raise awareness and understanding of the need for peaceful resolution and to enable young people to become active in society. So keep this in mind for this challenge. I think it's really interesting and I think your students will greatly benefit from this as well. Then we have step four. After the preparation, you just integrate the build challenge into your class with your students. For this, I've mentioned it before, you can split your 
students in groups of one to five and specify the actions that they need to take or that you need to take in together with them to build a world using Minecraft Education Edition. Step five would be to actually build their vision for peace. So the developed worlds need to address the topic, what is your vision for peace? And here you can let your students think about something that they are passionate about or want to change. And you can support your students in building a model of a new world where this change has already happened. Then step six would be to take a video of this world. So after your learners have built their worlds, you take a 90 second video of each of the worlds. So it's one video per group of students. And these videos should clearly present the developed world and explain the creation in detail. So we do recommend a voiceover and some, rec yeah, some explanations in English. Again, make sure to address the selection criteria. And uh, yeah, these are, for instance, presenting novelty, creativity, and sending a clear message on democracy and peace. And if you wonder where you can find these criteria, again, have a look at the terms and conditions. You'll find them there. And I know it's a long document, but you will be much better prepared for this competition if you have a look there. And remember that the video and the created world must be in English. So step seven, and then we're almost done. You submit your video and the supporting materials. So you do remember the registration form from the beginning, step one. You can use exactly this form to submit your video and you just fill out the information and upload the video that you've taken. All entries must be submitted by the 22nd of May before midnight Central European summertime in order to be eligible for the competition. And that is pretty much it. The next steps are to spread the world the word so let the world know about your participation in the stem alliance minecraft education edition competition you can share your activities in social media tagging the stem alliance and minecraft education edition and finally you can win your prize and uh, this is as i mentioned the first for the first two winners in both categories uh, we have a promotional video as well as various Minecraft goodies and the third place prizes for both categories will consist of Minecraft goodies. And this will be handed out to both teachers and learners in early summer. Now, I mentioned uh, the terms and conditions, of course, I've also mentioned the website, but uh, this is generally where you can find also useful resources. So check out these links and uh, you will find more guidance there. So this is it from my, my side so far for the introduction of this competition. Again, just a quick reminder to fill in the participation list. And uh, as I mentioned here, it's crucial that you validate your attendance and fill in your digital signature basically. And then you can also get a certificate of attendance. So, let me now introduce you to our expert, Nina Gibert. And Nina Gibert is a global Minecraft mentor and Microsoft innovative educator expert. For the past three years, Nina's goal has been to help educators and students across Europe to embrace game based learning as part of their teaching process. She is an advocate of using modern educational tools in school and has been helping educators integrating Minecraft Education Edition into their classrooms. Nina, how are you tonight? I'm great. How about you? I'm good, thanks. And I'm really happy you're here with us today because you will be demonstrating the process of entering and building Minecraft worlds to help educators who want to participate in the competition. So, Nina, the floor is yours. Exactly. Thank you so much for this introduction, Björn. Um, so, hi everyone. My name is Nina Gibert, and from the participant list, I can see that some of us already know each other. Um, and I will be showing you some basics of Minecraft um, Education Edition today. So, I hope everyone is doing well today. Everyone's doing great. 
So what are we going to do today? Today we're going to go <laughs> over the basic things you need to know to participate in this challenge. Um, I will show you how to download Minecraft Education Edition and sign in, how to find the active citizen world, create a world, and then we will go over the basics like movement in Minecraft, the world structure, challenge area, your inventory. I will show you how to place and break blocks, and we'll also take a look at um, how we can use some items like chalkboards and signs and books just to make this build even more interesting. Um, as Bjorn said, you can write your questions in the chat at any time. I will try to answer them during this session, but we also have some um, allocated time for Q&A at the end. So because my um, internet connection isn't the best, I'll just <laughs> I will just turn off my camera for now and start sharing my screen. Just let me know if um, if you if you don't see it, you should be able to see it now. Yes, we can so, see your screen. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> so um, to participate in this challenge, you will need Minecraft Education Edition and the Microsoft 365 accounts to sign in. You can find Minecraft Education Edition on education.minecraft.net website. Uh, I'm sure Isidora is already typing it in the chat, but if not, I will just, I will just um, paste it here as well. So when you get to this website, you can just click on the download button at the top of the page, and that will take you um, to this page where you can download a game that is suitable for your device. Um, so you can use um, Minecraft Education Edition on Windows devices, on Chromebook, Mac and iPads, but a version that is suitable for you uh, will appear in this red area in the middle of the page. So you just need to click download now button and wait for it to download to your device. Um, so since the file is 600 <laughs> mega or even over that, um, it's a bit large, so it can take a few minutes to download and you can find the downloaded file in your designated downloads folder. And once the file is, um, is downloaded, you can just open it. I'll just try and show you if it's downloaded yet. Uh, OK, it's not downloaded, but it will look a bit like this. It will have this bookshelf icon. So you just open that file, follow the instructions for the setup. Um, since I already have it installed, I will not show you the whole installation um, process. I will just I just want to make a note that usually your students are already familiar with Minecraft um, and have been playing it for years. Um, so you have to make sure that they have this education edition uh, version of the game, not other versions. They usually know Java or Bedrock edition, and you can see the difference in icons. Um, education edition has this bookshelf icon, and if the Minecraft icon looks different, then you have the wrong version and you need to download the one from the website. So once you've downloaded and installed it, I see mine is still downloading, so we will not go <laughs> through the process, but it's, you know, just a few clicks of in just, you know, just follow the installation wizard. I'm sure we all know how to do that. Um, but once it's downloaded, you just open the, the file and you can sign in. Here you need to use the account that you use to sign into the um, just your, you know, Microsoft Cloud 365 um, accounts that you have. If you don't have them, you can always ask for some demo accounts. And I will just use mine real quickly. Oh, I usually mistype my password when I have my live webinar, so. <laughs> uh, okay, so once we sign in, we see a menu with four options here in the middle. The easiest way to find Active Citizen World is by clicking on this new and featured button. And you can find a couple of highlighted lessons with, uh, which change every few weeks or months. So I'd, I'd suggest that you just keep coming back and see if there are any new lessons for you. Um, but today we will use the active, active Citizen lesson, which is this third lesson in the top row. So once, once you find it, just click on it and it opens this new menu with some information about the world, who it's appropriate for, uh, what age, 
um, and difficulties it's it's good for and there are also some um, tags which help you categorize these lessons and see if they are useful for your school subject as well as a short description of the world. Um, I also suggest that, that you take a look at the resources that are available to you um, by clicking on this um, lesson plan button, but Bjorn already showed you some resources, so we will, we will skip over that for now. Um, but if time permits, we'll look at them together. So when you are ready to jump, jump into the world, just click the Create World button, and we log into the world in front of this Oh, let me just <laughs> wait a few seconds so it loads. Perfect. Um, it may take a few minutes to load, depends on how slow or fast your computer is. But once we log in, we see this impressive building. And as you can see, you can only um, go one way, so you just have to follow this path because um, the lesson itself is designed in such a way that it guides you through the world. So if you have never played Minecraft before, let's go over the movements first. Um, you can move forward by pressing the W key on your keyboard. You can move back by pressing the S key, move left by pressing the A key and right by pressing the D key. To look around the world, move the mouse. Um, if you're not used to it, it can take some practice, but it'll don't worry, you will get the hang of it. Um, and Minecraft also has this neat little feature. If you look at the bottom left part of the screen, oh, I don't think you can see it now, but if there is, it says press H. So if you press um, H, then you can see the controls that we just mentioned, like how to move forward, back, left, right, how to jump, um, how to uh, access our inventory, chat, code builder, and how to sneak around. Um, the, basically, we'll just use some of these, so you don't have to remember them. But if you, do, if you, you know, if you're ever in doubt, just press H. So when when we enter this building, we are greeted by Alfred Nobel. Uh, we already we already know him as a Swedish chemist and engineer, and he's best known for inventing dynamite and, of course, the Nobel Prize. Um, in this game, Alfred is an NPC which is short for a non-player character. And the role of the NPCs in Minecraft is to give the player information and to guide us um, to interact with the NPCs. What we need to do is click on them with the rise mod button. Of course, we need to be close enough. It doesn't have to be right next to him, but in case we, we press, uh, we click right button on him and it, nothing happens, just move a bit closer. Um, so he introduces himself. Uh, he told he welcomes us to the Nobel Peace Center um, and asks if we are ready, if we are here to visit the Nobel Peace Center or to participate in this challenge. So the active citizen world is structured, is structured so it has a couple of activities which are led by famous Nobel Prize winners. So let's just click visit for now. And we can always go back to talk to him. Um, I strongly recommend you to take a look at these activities. So if, if we have enough time at the end, we can go over one of the activities together. But for now, let me just show you how these work. So in this room behind Alfred Nobel, there are four paintings, two on each wall. And this, um, each painting has an NPC uh, which represents one of the four Nobel laureates on the side of this build. Here you can see who each of them is. So there's their name and some short description, but you, you can't really can't really read it. What you can do is press this button and the NPC will come towards us and we can talk to them. Again, with pressing right click on them. Um, so you can just see who they are, what they're famous for. For now, we're going to click exit because we're going to walk around some more and uh, see what the challenge area is. Uh, but if you want to go into the into the actual activity, you press start adventure to get teleported into the activity. I really recommend you um, do these activities with your students before you start the challenge 
so they get an idea what kind of topics come into play for this challenge and just get some inspiration from them. Just make sure to tell the students that the worlds that uh, in here are made by professionals and we are not um, expecting them to build something on this level. <clears throat> so let's jump into the challenge area. So we need to click exit. And let's return back to Alfred. And talk to him again. Again, right, right click on him. And this time we will choose the build challenge button and just click it. It will teleport us into this area where the whole challenge will take place. So again, we are greeted by Alfred, who is here um, to remind us what the purpose of this challenge is. Now what we can do, just, just press OK. Here we are in creative mode, which means that we have all the blocks that are available to us. We can fly um, and how we can do that is by double pressing the space bar to go higher you hold space to go lower you press you hold shift and to stop flying just double um, double press the space bar again so why is this flying so important uh, so when your students are building whatever they decide to build it's just much easier to move around and access places high up if you fly so when they build something um, they can just fly around and continue uh, building. Let me just see if I can, because it's kind of, I don't see why it won't show me the whole. Okay, well, I hope you can see well enough. I don't know why the this um, doesn't, doesn't disappear, but okay. So um, you can see these copper blocks on the floor. This is basically the canvas for your challenge. Um, it's the build area that's where you where you and your students need to build or your students need to build. So how do we do that? We have an inventory in Minecraft that we can access by clicking E. Some people remember it because E can stand for everything, but you can always just click H and see the keyboard hints if you forget how to access it. So once you are in this inventory, you can see all the blocks that are available to you. So these are the blocks that your students will use for building. You can search for blocks by typing, um, by going to the search um, tab, um, or you can just look through these different sections. That is kind of, their, these items are categorized in four categories. So um, if you know what you're looking for, you can also search by that. Um, it's here to help you. Um, so you can filter it by their use, like construction, um, equipment, items, and nature. So whenever you see a plus on a block in the library, you can just click on it until um, it will just show you different types of the same block. For example, just click on a stone or leaves and you can just see different different types of leaves or different types of snow, uh, stone or logs and wood and so on. Um, but if you stay in this all category, then you will just have all these um, blocks available to you at all times. <clears throat> so let's just take a look at a couple of different types of blocks. Obviously, we are not going to cover all of them, but I just want to give you a rough idea of what's available to you. You can choose between different types of wood, different types of stone, different types of walls, fences, fen fences, fence gates, some stairs. Stairs are actually really cool to use for roofs. There's also doors. Be careful when using this um, iron door because it needs um, it won't open that easily, it needs redstone. Um, if you ask your students, they will know about it. Otherwise, just try to avoid the, the iron door. Um, so you can also, there's also different types and colors of glass, um, slabs or different kinds of stone and some, some, new, some new magical materials that are only exist in Minecraft. There's also lots and lots of copper, diamonds, um, emeralds, 
wool, just concrete, um, terracotta, all these different types of wood obviously are gonna, wood and stone is one of the most popular ones. Um, there's also some food and some grasses and some kind of some kind of so um, saplings like you can you can use trees but it's not going to grow on copper. Um, there's also some flowers. I will recommend that you do not use these eggs. These are to spawn different animals, um, and some of some of them are friendly and some of them are a bit less friendly. Um, so I would just avoid them altogether unless, you know, there are some like nice, friendly um, cats or or pigs or something. Um, you can also you also have some um, some tools, some weapons, some armor, arrows, food, potions. These items are can be used for decoration. So I just want to show you really fast what exists. Uh, without spending too much time here. Um, but let's say chests can also come in hand handy and um, campfire is also a nice addition. So let's just select a few materials and see um, how to place them. So I will just go for some kind of plank and let's go for some kind of copper and let's use concrete magenta sure why not okay so what you see happened is i actually there are two ways to move the items you can just left click on them and move them into this area it's called hotbar um, and just place them in or you can just hold shift and left and left click on this on this um, item or block that you want to choose and then it's just gonna uh, put it in your hotbar automatically. So now that I have the chosen items available, let me just choose some glass and let's go with the door as well. Um, so you can see on the right side of the screen that I am holding an item. So if I don't have any item in my hand, then you will see the actual hand of the character. To switch between these items, you can either use your mouse wheel or press numbers from one to nine on your um, keyboard. So the left square of my hotbar is number one and the right square is number nine. Um, you can also see uh, what you are holding by looking at the hotbar. Whichever square has a thicker border is the item that is chosen. So since we are in creative mode, all of the blocks are available to us in infinite stock, so you can never run out of items. So now that we have um, our items chosen, let's be ready to build. To place a block, you need to look at the block you want to build on. Um, so you can see that little plus sign in the middle. This is where our character, where we are going to place things. So if I click on the right, uh, right mouse button, I will place um, a block. So most of the Minecraft blocks aren't affected by gravity and they will stay exactly where you place them, but they need a block below um, or you know next to them so you can um, so you can actually place it. But you can get rid of it afterwards and it's gonna stay up. If you want to remove a block like I've just done, you can just left click on it and it will disappear. And you can also remove um, a block below. So yeah, like we already showed you, it will stay up. So you can always replace the blocks in your hotbar or put more than nine stacks, nine of these um, in your inventory. So you don't have to look around the library for them. Just open your inventory by pressing E and you can see on your character if you click on this um, on this book icon. So this inventory is like your character's backpack and it can fit up to 36 stacks of items. So let's see, we just by stack, I mean. I mean, see this, you have like 64 of them um, in your 
in, in I can have 64 of them right now. But since we are in creative mode, like I said, they just don't run out. So another trick that you can use, let's see if it works. So another trick you can do is right now you can see that I have my magenta block. And if I click, if I look at the, the block that I want to, let's say, copy, I just press, I look at it with my, with this little plus in the middle of the screen and click on the mouse wheel and then it will change into the block that it's, that I'm looking at. I can do the same with the orange block, for example. <clears throat> um, so this just helps us when we don't know the exact name of the block or when we just want to build faster. Um, in case you press E and you can see the block library, just switch between these three options um, at the top. Open book is just the block library, book and chest. Um, opens the library and your inventory. Uh, that might be best way to use the inventory depending on your preference, of course. And if you click on the chest, you can only see your inventory and hotbar as well as your character. OK, so now that we've made this um, structure, <laughs> uh, we might want to add some signs to explain what exactly we made. For that, you can use um, signs, boards, slates, posters, and book and quill. So we can just go into our library, and if we know what we're looking for, we can type the, we can, we can just type the name of it, but if we don't, we can just look through the, through this, um, through all of the blocks to find them. But you, as you can see, there are so many that it's sometimes it's just easier <laughs> to type. But as you can see, there's they are kind of bundled together. So signs and a slate. And I can just get rid of these. A poster, a chalkboard, and a book and quill. I will just use that as well. So book and quill. Okay, so. Why am I showing you this? Because sometimes you just want to add some text um, and you can do that by using these items. So if you use the sign, you can only write, just write four lines of text on this sign. And now I'm running out of text. OK, so let's just, OK, yeah. So now you can see that after I've written four lines, then then I don't have more space anymore. So I can, of course, break the sign and make a new one, uh, but I can't edit the text um, if you want to change it later on. But it can be placed on any type or, of wall, or it can also be placed on the ground. There are three types of chalkboards that you can write messages on. They are slate, poster, let me just say slate, poster and a board. <clears throat> like the sign, they can be placed on the ground or on some kind of a wall, depending on how much text you need to write. You have different options. So slate is the smallest one, poster is a bit bigger, and the board is the biggest. So this can be edited. So if you wish to change your text, so let me let me just write a quick text text um, and I can actually once I've written something just right click on it I can just um, edit this text I can just click escape to exit or click X now if you want to edit or uh, write on it click the right button because it can happen really fast that you click the left button um, then they will disappear along with all the text that you wrote. So you really have to um, be careful because um, then, you know, in case you have a lot of text, I always recommend that you have a backup world, Word of Excel file on your computer with the text. So even if the, um, even if the board disappears or poster or slate disappears, oh, come on, then you can also you can always you can always change it 
maybe just a quick something that maybe you can you will not expect since it has to be in English it's fine but if you have any special characters in your in your language then you will see that the the text itself the the font will change slightly but it's not really a problem um, it just it just changes the appearance a little bit and another way that you can um, write things or you know use just to decorate um, your build is you can use an item called book and quill to write text into a book so just choose the book it has to it has to have this white quill uh, with it just click um, right click on it and you can also write text into book and quill. So now that I closed it, if I right click on it again, I can still edit it. But once I am done with this, with my with my text, I have to sign it and I have to enter title of the book, whatever you wanna uh, name it. Obviously, you can't be you can't uh, have the title that's too long and just sign and close the book and it will change this um, color into a purple one. Uh, what you can do is just use a lectern. Let me just show you that a real quick hint and you can put a book on it. So now you can now you have a lectern with the book and your your um, text. Um, so even though Minecraft allows us to place NPCs, um, these characters like Alfred Nobel, they cannot be used here. Um, but when you are done, you can record your build or if you're not ready to record right away, just click escape. Then exit. Save and exit again and go to play, view my worlds and you will find your world saved there so you can come back to it. Um, this is a somewhat quick run through of the important features that you need to know as an educator to help your students uh, to participate in the challenge. Um, just before um, we go to the Q&A section, I would just like to show you um, how to use multiplayer because it is the it is easiest if the students are able to build at the same time. Let me just look real fast. OK, there are. Okay, we will we will uh, go over the questions later. Okay, I see that some of them, some of you cannot see the active citizen world, so I'll just show you again. Um, okay, so it's easiest if the students are able to build at the same time. Um, the whole group is able to build at the same time. That's why you or one of the students should host a multiplayer world that the whole group can join and play together. Now it's important that the students are using the same tenant. What I mean by that, so let me just, if I, if I log out real fast, uh, then I closed it, because why not? <laughs> so if I log out real quickly, um, the, so if you look at a username, so let me just use mine. If you look at the new username, you will notice that it consists of usually a first and last name. Probably in your in your um, case, I have this organization name, so just pretend that it says Nina Gibert here. Um, and then there's the at sign and the name of their organization, like your school or Microsoft.com, or in my case, ambassadors on Microsoft.com. Basically, everything after the at sign is a tenant. Uh, I will link you an article actually as well on, or you will get that you will get it in the email afterwards on how to set up a multiplayer game in Minecraft Education Edition. Um, so you can find all the information about it because there is quite a lot. It can be quite a, uh, a lot of information and we don't have time for that right now, but just make sure that you have that you have the same tenant that everything after this is the same and then you should be able to join um, the multiplayer. So how do you join it? If I go back into, into this world. 
So someone asked again that you can see Active Citizen, right? So just try and go into new and featured again. I don't know if you've um, if you seen that part, but just try and look at it or maybe afterwards you can share the screen and we can take a look at it together. Um, but other than that, you can you can actually just. Um, so go here and press create world or what you can do is if you already have a world, just go to view my worlds because all the worlds that you're gonna that you ever you know open that you start are saved in the view my worlds section here. So play and view my worlds. Here I have my active citizen. Um, if you don't have uh, this world yet, then just make a new one like we did before, or you can just host it, and that's how you can create a multiplayer world. So once you host it, if you press escape, um, you see there are two two um, tabs here. Just go on the right tab, and you see there's some join code that you can change, but you know, I suggest that you keep it the same, but sometimes it's just nice to have two of the same characters, especially if um, if the, the students are younger. Um, so this is the code that you need to give, you know, to your students or the student has to give to the, to the other's teammates um, so they can join, they can join the multiplayer world. Um, I will just show you how to join real fast. So I'll just save and exit. How to join the world is if you need to, you know, go back into play and you have this join world uh, button here. And we had, I don't know, Steve and two others and Steve. So you enter the join code and you click confirm. If I click confirm now, then it's just going to give me uh, a wrong an error because this, this game doesn't exist for me. Um, so, but this is basically how they join. Sometimes it can be a bit tricky to work with multiplayer. So another workaround uh, that you can use in case you cannot make your multiplayer work on this uh, one time is just to have a student build something, save and exit the world as we did, go into view my worlds folder, click on this world, um, manage and export. Be careful not to click. <laughs> delete but yeah export the world and then you can just save it you can see it's named after the world and it's the macworld uh, file type so just save it uh, okay i'll do it here and what you can do is just click so you can just send it to the next student and, and they can import it by clicking on this button clicking open or what they can actually do is just go to their desktop and find the world and just click on it twice so it starts importing it um, already. It, will, it should load automatically in our in the world that we've already made, but in case it doesn't, always go check the view my worlds um, section. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, it's a bit longer, great, so I was just great, Nina. Say, yeah. <laughs> uh, that was just it from my side. I think right now we have time for Q&A, right? <laughs> exactly. So we have 10 more minutes and indeed we have received some questions. So. Uh, yes, so the first question we received is uh, from a participant who's asking, is it OK if we resubmit our application since we hurried to finish before the first deadline and indeed in this case since we extended the deadline you are free to submit again and we will consider the latest submission that we have from you so um, you can adapt this if you have the time with your students and if you feel the need there so um, yeah we will consider the latest application or the latest submission that we have from your side then we have another question from a participant and they are asking, uh, what if we don't have a Microsoft 365 account? Uh, Nina, I think you know something about this, right? There are some demo versions and free version for this. Um, yeah, you do you want to answer? 
um, you should be able to um, get the accounts for yourself um, for in your student. There are some demo accounts. Um, it's best to just ask the Microsoft that is on your or just first ask your school because I don't know for each country, obviously, but. Um, oh, yeah, Isidora uh, just gave us another link just how to um, there are other options to do a challenge how to get how to try the uh, Minecraft, Minecraft education edition for free. So just take a look at that um, at that. Exactly. In that article. And but also should be able to get it. Exactly. So also there are some options that we provide in the terms and conditions. So feel free to have a look there and it's in the first steps when you register. Uh, there are some links on how to get uh, an Office 365 education account or to get the free trial uh, to, to participate in this competition. So I hope that clarifies this. Then, Nina, we had a question on the, yeah, on someone not being able to see the active citizen world, but I think we addressed this and you showed it. And we have a question on when we will uh, be able to see the results. So this, of course, first we need to close this competition that will be on the 22nd, 22nd of May. And then we have a panel of jurors who will really carefully evaluate each of the submissions according to the criteria that you will find in the terms and conditions. And we expect the results to be available by summer. So in summer, you will be uh, notified if you've won and we will publish and announce the winners on our website, on social media. And then you will also receive the Minecraft goodies. And if you've been selected for the promotional video, then of course we will be in touch with you for this as well, because we need to organize uh, the interviews and some follow up there. Now I see we had a hand raised. Is that still the case? I think maybe the hand was lowered again. So otherwise we have another. Yes, so Marilina. I see you're raising your hand. Or not. So in any case, we have a question from a participant here. Um, if you do not find the names of the students participating in the project in the registration form, um, is that required? No, it's not required. So you do not need to enter the names of your students. Um, you need to submit as a teacher and in the video you just show the the world that your students have created and of course you can submit several videos so if you're participating with several student groups then uh, you can you can submit several videos now um yes marilina lonely girl do you want to unmute yourself and ask your question It seems like we cannot hear you at this point. If you have a question, feel also free to write it in the chat. Then we still have some time to address it. I just wanted to say that um, that I also entered the I also wrote the um, how to set up a multiplayer game article in the chat, so you can check this out as well. And after right after this this um, session you will get an email with the or you can or is it going to be on the website the resources that we entered in this chat beyond how is it going to be you yeah so in any case the resources they they are available on the website but of course everyone who participated here today will also receive a follow-up email and there uh, we can also include these extra resources So, Marilina, if you want to 
Yes, here is your question. So you downloaded the demo version of Minecraft, but when you log in, you don't find the active citizen world. Indeed, uh, this could be due to the fact that you need to use the free trial version. So there are different options for having, uh, yeah, to participate in this competition. And you need to download the free trial version. The free trial is limited to 25 logins for teachers. However, only to teachers who have an Office 365 education account. And then your students, they will have 10 logins and any other user that is uh, linked to the free trial. So this is a way how you can participate anyway without uh, getting the, uh, the actual subscription. So it's a free trial. Good. So with this being said, I just want to draw your attention one more time to our competition. And here, this is, as I mentioned, the STEM Alliance Minecraft Education Edition competition. You will find all the necessary information on the link here on the slide. But of course, you can also stay tuned and find out more on social media. And also, if you would like to learn more about the active citizen world and how to integrate it in your classroom, we invite you to join the active citizen live lesson next Wednesday on the 11th of May at 730 Central European Summertime. As I have previously mentioned, we have a very crucial, crucial request. Please validate your attendance in this webinar with this digital signature list. If you want to receive a certificate of attendance, this is the only way uh, to request one. If you are watching the recording of this webinar, please note that only participants who actually attended live will be able to receive a certificate. <clears throat> and here we have a feedback survey. So if you have a moment, to share your thoughts. We would really appreciate it. It takes about three minutes and we will be able to improve in the future. So feel free to scan this QR code or click on the link and we'll be happy to hear your feedback. And this is it from our side. So the recording of this webinar together with the slides will be available on the STEM Alliance website in the following days. We will also send you a follow-up email with all the details you need and also with the extra resources that Nina shared. Thank you so much, Nina, for your demonstration and thanks to the audience for this really interesting session. And that's all from our side. Take care, stay safe and have a nice evening. Bye-bye.